All right, welcome to Heartland Connections and Play It Forward, aid for musicians impacted by the current health crisis. Uh, the music industry out there right now has been among the first to close. They'll be one of the last to be able to reopen due to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, so this places musicians who depend on income uh, for a living, it places them in, in some pretty dire financial positions. So uh, Play It Forward is a campaign created by Heartland Connections and the Galva Arts Council uh, in partnership with the Levitt Foundation and the Gillsburg Community Foundation uh, to try to aid our area musicians. Uh, we're gonna have 20 musicians give 20 performances over four dates uh, here in May, and each act will be awarded a $500 grant plus what you, the viewer, you, the viewer, uh, can contribute to their virtual tip jar. So we also encourage you to check out each artist's uh, webpage, social media pages, where you can purchase music and other items. Um, you can see a list of our artists at heartlandconnections.com and also playitforward.rocks. Um, so please join us for our live stream on Heartland Connections on our Facebook and YouTube platforms. Um, also please message the live stream on Facebook during the show and uh, look for a link to Zoom because we're also going to try to Zoom the concerts as well. So keep that in mind. So right now um, we'll get to each of our artist performances, but uh, this also gives us a chance to get to know them a little further. So I'm excited to speak to Bryce Janey um, <laughs> and uh, this evening. So Bryce, thanks for doing this and being with us and uh, performing for us coming up. I hope you I hope this is going to be an exciting thing for you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. This is really cool. I was glad to get the email and uh, uh, I know I know some of the folks on the list. So hopefully see some, you know, people that I haven't seen in a while and be good to just get out and play too. I tell you, you know, so yeah. So yeah. so just for our viewers out there, um, if you don't mind, uh, tell us a little bit where you're from and your background. Sure. Uh, I'm from actually from Marion, Iowa, but I live in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, started playing music when I was probably about 13, 14. We had a family band called the Janies Blues Band, and uh, we did a lot of playing all over, you know, in Chicago and Minneapolis and places. Did a lot of the kind of the blues circuit and St. Louis and different places, and uh. And just played around probably since then, and I've been solo now for probably uh, oh, probably since about the early '90s, I guess, when I did my own solo stuff as with a band or uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, acoustic stuff, you know, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I've just been kind of a, a heartland music man, blues guy here for a long time now. So you know, but still in Eastern Iowa, you know, love it here. So. Yeah, it's a good, good, I mean, Midwest, you know, you grow up here, it just, that's, it's in your blood, isn't it? I mean, yeah, with, with where, the, where the living is easy and there ain't no smog around. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. you mentioned, I mean, I, the other question, as I say, you know, how long have you been performing? But obviously you mentioned, um, you, you know, you started like, what, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. How did, how did, how yeah. did that happen? Where did you, where did that come from? Well, well, my dad was a was a player. He he played ever since he was a kid. So he was in a band since I you know was a kid growing up. Um, so I started playing guitar pretty young, you know, probably six seven or something like that. And just being around it all the time, it was just a natural course for me to go, you know. Um, and that's how I, and I was able to go play professionally in bars and all that because I was with both my parents, so they, you know, and I was working, so that's how I was able to play when I was uh, 13, 14, you know, in clubs. Obviously, I couldn't drink or nothing like that, but uh, <laughs> uh, not the thing. So, um, yeah, so uh, that's, that's, that's how that came about, and then I've just been doing it ever since, you know, so not so the same bars, though. <laughs> so so i assume uh you know obviously your father had to be a huge influence then i mean you see that all the time and you learn but uh um you know i'll let you speak to him individually but besides him were there other influences i'm sure you were around musicians oh sure oh yeah i mean i mean the obvious for me being a guitar player you know there was uh, there was a great amount of local guys in my area cedar rapids here that were big influences on me besides my dad, uh, Billy Lee, uh, Dennis McMurn, you know, Daddy-O, uh, Ron DeWitt, Craig Erickson, 
uh, all Louis Carr. There was a lot of great guitar players that came out of this area. Um, and I, I kind of, and I played with those guys at a real young age as well as played with a lot of guys in Chicago and different places, you know. And, and so that was kind of a big influence on me to, uh, yeah. So, you know, besides those guys then, uh, you know, are there any, any current musicians out there that you've been around that oh, you're like, wow, sure, these yeah. guys are, you know, th they're inspiring me to do something new, even though I've played for so long? Oh, sure. Yeah. You always, uh, you always see stuff. Um, I mean, besides the guys like the blues, I don't just listen to blues stuff, but, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that I've, um, trying to think would it be some, you know, like Gary Clark Jr. There's some young guys coming out like him. There's a lot of just unheard of guys too, that are really good that are starting to break out that Kingfish and, uh, you know, guys like that. Uh, Doyle Bramall, pretty good player. But there's a lot. You know, I still listen to the old classic blues too, you know, and stuff like that. Um, you have a favorite artist from back then? Uh, yeah, it, I always have a toss, probably between like, uh, you know, like Lightning Hopkins or Sunhouse or you know one of those guys, or you know, obviously Robert Johnson with all the guitar stuff is always always a fun one. Probably Delta Blues is probably some of my favorite time period stuff, but you know, gotta love the Howlin' Wolf too, you know. So that Chicago stuff and the electric and just the the evolution of it's really, I think, what interested me the most. Yeah, but so I what, also enjoy Americana and roots, and you know, and not I don't just listen to blues, you know. So. No. So for, for you, though, in terms of, of your style of play and, and, and what you like with blues, roots, Americana, what is it about that music that, you know, that, that style, that genre that does it for you, I guess? Is it something, is it something more of a feeling? Is it something that, you know, it, what, what grabs you to, to want to play that style? I mean, for me, there's probably, you got to find what works for you regardless of what style you're trying to do or what you like and what you like and what you're good at might be two different things, you know? So that's the biggest thing is trying to find, but, um, I, uh, boy, I really enjoy, um, God, I probably just the basic bare bones of it, you know, a good story, just, you know, easy going kind of, uh, kind of like a good old country song too but i you know there's something you know but i'd say probably that's what i enjoy the most probably just the broke down the truth here it is it's you know not a bunch of fancy stuff and, and uh yeah probably that well and uh so at, at heartland connections you know it, part of what we do um we feel that music can create opportunities and um uh, we want to create those opportunities, whether it's a social, cultural, or economic situation in 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 where we are at. So, you know, has music for you been any type of vehicle for change that you've seen out there, whether it's you personally or for other people? Well, I mean, I've always, you know, I've done the blues in the schools for a lot of years, and, oh, wow. and over the years, periodically, with different um, organizations, and that's always been a great thing to get it out to the, uh, you know, the kids in the, the grade school level. Um, but it's, uh, I, I've done different stuff at schools, you know, where you try to, you do that, you break it out to some kids, but it's probably never enough, you know. Maybe things will start changing a little more now with all the, you know, the streaming and stuff and, you know, and kids are, you know, they might have a little more, uh, I shouldn't say time, but, you know, time to maybe uh, check out some new stuff new music and uh um yeah yeah well we hope we you know hopefully we'll have a lot of people watching and it'll be a lot of kids and you never know you might very yeah. possible you could influence yeah. a kid to to pick up that guitar and you know sure yeah you. I, yeah yeah you never know i mean i've you know i've taught guitar my you know a long time too privately and mm -hmm. places and uh yeah it's always good when you can when you see a student or a someone that's you know looked up to you like guys I looked up to 
you know, and let me get up and play when I was young, you know, or when I turned 21 and I come in there and you with your friends and stuff and, you know, all, you know, the guys in the band, they let you get up and play, you know, yeah. you got to kind of do that same stuff to the younger guys too, you know? So yeah, it's a good thing, but yeah, there's not a ton of, you know, in, in fortunately in kind of the roots and the blues, the kind of stuff, it's, 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 it, there isn't as many kids probably digging on it as, you know, secular type stuff even well, though it's in there you know they just it's just kind of twisted around a little different but we'll keep changing you know keep good, playing though. maybe that'll change yeah yeah right right i'll be the one yeah yeah so you know obviously um we're doing this this live stream you know concert w w with these different artists because of the situation so you know pre-pandemic um you know what j just to give people a, a glimpse of life before uh the COVID-19 shutdown you know what was what was it like your life as a musician during that time pre pre-COVID here you know if, if you got any you know well, stories yeah, I mean, or memories or, or or performing live whatever works for you there uh you know it was really everything was just pretty much kind of a normal thing you know i i'd say the biggest thing was i was just starting to get all this stuff scheduled for the summer you know and then that's and then that stuff all kind of hit and then everything got canceled and pushed back and uh so that was kind of a little bit of a bummer but you know other than that i mean it was pretty everything was normal up to that point i didn't uh you know, I had a candidate. I was supposed to go to Canada this week and play, but we obviously <laughs> aren't doing that. So I don't think they're letting anybody in the country anyway, or no. uh, you know, or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we thought. Uh, with, so, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, there, I, there was really nothing. It was just like all of a sudden, bam, you know, and and uh, but it, but at least there's been uh, some nice platforms you know with the online stuff that's been uh i've been able to do a few of those and and that's been kind of nice so you know well with I, i'm sure i mean i mean you just said you were going to go be going to canada you've played all over the place many places i assume every musician has a really good funny story about being on the road and playing at a certain place i mean do you have any or maybe it's an inspiring story or or uh, just a special experience you have. Oh, I, I assume everybody's got one of those. Yeah, I mean, it would just it just depends on uh, which audience I'm telling. <laughs> so I gotta let me let me get well, my. Th this is a family show, so we'll start there. <laughs> no, uh, probably my. I mean, one of the, my favorite experiences was when I was probably about fifteen, sixteen. Uh, first time playing at Buddy Guy's Club in Chicago, oh, wow. Legends, which was not the location it is now. It was when it was on West Belmont, or was that uh, Halstead? I can't remember. But uh, we pulled up, you know, when I went in there and sat and got a pop or something. You know, I was sitting in there and started talking to this guy next to me. And he's like, yeah. And I was talking. I go, is Buddy around? And he's like, yeah, he's right there. And he goes, I'm his manager. And he was talking to him. That's cool as a, you know, a young kid, because he was kind of one of our, still is, you know, buddy guy in the blues world for yeah. uh, a young, young guys playing. And this, you know, I'm talking, you know, this is early 90s, you know, with the, we, there was a big, big blues boom, you know, in the early 90s with all the, you know, buddy guy. And fortunately, kind of, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan passed away. Yeah. Uh, too, you know, that was kind of a weird deal and all that, but. Yeah, probably some of those experiences with, uh, uh, there was a funny one last time I went to Canada, but I probably don't want to get into that one right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. You, you, you can tell us behind we, the we scenes. Wait, they, they let us in, so it couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, so with uh, yeah. now going into this time, I guess, I guess how are you currently dealing with life uh, during the pandemic and the sheltering in place and all of that, I guess, how are you dealing with things now? Uh, I'm just trying to stay busy. I'm trying to take advantage of some of the downtime in a sense to kind of, you know, regenerate and uh, kind of regroup, 
it's because sometimes it's so easy when you just keep going all the time you don't really so I've been trying to, uh, you know, kind of do some stuff like that. But I've been busy. I, you know, I, I do. I have a recording studio and different stuff like that. I've been doing, um, yeah, and just try. We got a new dog. We got, I adopted a little beagle. And we're, we're working her in and uh, Mabel. And uh, that, was a, that was perfect time for that, too. So that worked out real good. I assume you but, found out uh, beagles you, make good uh, doorbells you know yeah, somebody yeah, there <laughs> yeah oh yeah 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 no kidding no kidding but uh, yeah just been trying to stay busy and uh and 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 enjoy doing some stuff you know with yeah. like you folks and uh some streams and stuff and try to uh and and we've tried there's a group of musicians in my area that have been trying to kind of help out some of the other musicians some of the older ones we know guys that you know that don't get online and just don't have the the access to get any of them extra funds so we kind of just been doing some private stuff like that too yeah you know you got to kind of look out you know for those guys you know so so uh i guess uh any advice you could give to any of the musicians that you've learned during this time that are dealing with this too or <sighs> yeah boy i i mean this is all new ground you know for everybody i guess in a sense uh I would say just try to uh, refresh and regroup and, I, and it, it can kind of make you appreciate maybe where you were before you weren't in the best situation you would like to be in in life or in your career whichever but it could always be worse you can always look across the street down the road you'll see something that's worse and you'll go oh see it wasn't that bad so then when you come back to your little gigs or whichever you might enjoy it more, you know, and you just want to play music. So you got to kind of, you know, weigh all that stuff out. But I would say just try to, you know, try to enjoy yourself. Enjoy some time off if you're a working musician, you know. So. And and I, I guess, uh, I guess what's your outlook, what's your expectations for, I guess, when this hopefully all ends and, and we can... I, I hope we can all get back to some normal normalcy and you can get back in, in those tour yeah. dates again. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to set some stuff up for the fall because I don't think we're going to really be able to do much until probably, I mean, far as setting anything up festival wise, it looks like September is going to be the first thing I'll probably be really besides playing just, you know, regular club dates. Uh, yeah, just going to try to get back into it, but I'm going to try to do some things different too, you know, like I said, uh, not so much thinking about what's important, but kind of do stuff a little bit differently the way you've been doing stuff maybe or something, you know, but definitely would be happy to get back to doing some playing though. Well, I, I'm, you know. I'm hopeful. I think everybody else will be ready to go to places where people are playing too. Well, that too, right. Yeah. So yeah, sure. But, there you go. Go ahead. Yeah, nobody will have an excuse now for not coming out. I'll be looking. <laughs> I'll be watching. Well, I, I I appreciate your time. Um, you know, we'll let you get going this you evening. Thanks for talking to us. Um, but but before I go, is, uh, wh where could people go to find out more about you and what you're doing? Okay. Uh, I've got my Facebook. Um, I have a Facebook band page, just Bryce Janey, uh, or my regular Facebook page. And then I have uh, BryceJaney.com or the Janeys.com will get you to all of my, or Amazon, iTunes, CD Baby, YouTube, you know, it's all kind of connected, you know, those platforms. So awesome. Yeah. Well, buy, buy some records. Some CDs. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell you what, we're we're excited you're coming. Uh, we hope you are too. Uh, it'll it'll hopefully yeah. be a great experience for you. And uh, you know, we, yeah. we don't also want it to be the last time. We hope we'll we'll get to have you more in the future. Yeah, there you go. Down the line. That sounds so, good. That sounds yeah. good, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, that this is Bryce Janey, and uh, we hope you enjoy his show coming up here on on our uh, Play It Forward campaign, our Heartland Connection stream. Uh, thanks again for your time, Bryce, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this again. 
Well, yeah, we'll probably see you soon then. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Bryce. All right. Take care.